She's the cutest one more time. I'm gonna shut down this Twitch cutest? chat. Oh, but God, she's the me. cutest. Oh, but Machito. she's cute. Yeah, huh? that's great. Yeah, there's a lot of women in wrestling who are cute. Wow. It's like, you know, you, D D Brian, you can't say anything bad about Maki Ito, but man, that Raw women's tag sucked. Brother, come on. That's being a madman when you say something like that, okay? Yes, she was carried to a good match. She has things that she does very well. Her, She has some spots she does that look good. She's very charismatic. She knows when to do things when she's in with a great worker. But, like, in no universe are her punches any good. None. There is no universe in a in infinite number of universes where her punches are any good. And there's also no universe where she's not green. But she will get better, and that's fine. What is the problem here? Can you ever imagine a time where you are simping for Maki Ito? When she gets really good. Oh, man, all these terrible things I say about Asuka... Or Kyrie Sane. I mean, come on, get out of here. And by the way, Kyrie Sane is cuter than Maki Ito, so come at me. Damn. Best commentary duo in AEW is Excalibur and Taz. But Paul White and Tony Schiavone were so good together that they gave those two a run for their money. Paul White signing with the company for this role. Look at the chat going crazy. <laughs> it's just I, I just pulled the string. It's a, it's a different demo here. Just pull the string. <laughs> Hey, you know, I, I, I don't understand oh, look why... At look at you guys. I, I understand that. I don't understand why there would have been a lot of concern... Marionette! For... Marionette strings! <laughs> uh, why there was that much concern for Paul White from some quarters as far as how he do on commentary. Obviously, not everybody is cut out for it. It sounds easy on the surface, even for people who are great talkers. But... You know, I, with all of the acting he's done, with all of the time that he spent in WCW and WWE, and, you know, has got a familiarity with Tony Schiavone and Jim Ross, I'm just, I'm really surprised that people were, maybe they were just hoping for the worst out of him, but I thought of, of a lot of players that, that stepped into the role. Uh, Paul White is at the, you know, I got higher expectations for him than a lot of others. <laughs> They're going nuts still, aren't they? <laughs> You know what you call these these folks instead of Twitch homies? What's that? The Twitch fiddles. The <laughs> Let's see what we got here. I much Marianne enjoyed Sims. Paul White on AEW Elevation's debut show. He knew about the wrestlers, their history, called their finishing moves right, and most importantly was not faking it. He seemed to have his heart in it and didn't scream those stupid one-liners like Michael Cole. I'm not going to do comparisons between Paul White and the guys in WWE. Number one, it's not fair. And number two, like, I don't oh. want anyone defending these WWE. And you know what's funny is I actually never hear anyone defending the WWE. Even these crazy WWE fans that, like, everything in WWE is great and everything outside, they still never praise the commentary. What does that well, tell let, you? Well, let's be fair here, though, too. Excalibur loves yelling out the names of a move. Like, he makes one move yell out one sentence. It's just like, you know, whatever. Tobey got Hilo! And then Tony, ha, ah, that was great, or whatever it is. You know, he's just enjoying Yeah, but now it's the other way around. So, like, now Tony's like, Kakeshi! And <laughs> Big Show's like, uh, yeah, uh, fell on it with her head. Nobody is happier to be where they're at than Tony Schiavone, who seems to just, whatever he sees is the most magnificent, gleeful thing in the world. And the crazy part is, too, when you go back, because I do that sort of thing, when you go back and listen to Tony early on in his career, that's exactly, in a lot of ways, what he was like. The enthusiasm, it's its overwhelmed by the fact Actually, that he's standing next to David Crockett. You know David what he is Crockett, right now? But, you know what Tony is now? He's David Crockett. Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Who I thought was great, by the way. That's not a... I'm not burying Tony here. I know you would say that as a burial, but I love David Crockett. David had a lot of enthusiasm. He sure he did. Had, you know what he, he was had... like? He was like Maki Ito. He had a lot of charisma, <laughs> but he wasn't great at his job. Yeah, Bob Cottle and Tony Schiavone right there was tough. <laughs> They're still going nuts. It's crazy. They got a poll. What's this poll here? Uh, who is cuter? Oh, get out of here. You idiots. I don't know. I got to I got By the way, I got a question. Hey, Terry Twitch saying. homies, let's make up. I want to ask you guys a question. Why did Shane McMahon pour green goo on Braun Strowman? 
Is it a Jolly know. Green Giant joke? Damn it, Brian, you ruined the joke. Right there. You had the joke right there. You asked the question. It? I say I don't know. And the bucket of slime comes down as if it was, you know, Nickelodeon. As if this was, you can't do that on television. The famed Canadian television showcase for kids. They gave us Alanis Morissette and a lady named Moose. And it, and that's the... the why... Look, with as much as they go back to as far as historical references and they, they bring up Fast Times at Ridgemont High for, for Riddle and all of these things that they go back to, the Bro Derek, which was a one you know, uh, one out of the 70s. Yeah, Bro Derek. No references, no references to you can't do that on television. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.